All right, today we're continuing our cloud improvement series. This time we're gonna be diving into a little bit of a more basic concept, but still an important concept nonetheless. So we're gonna be talking about cutting the map in Call of Duty. So this tactic can be used in every single one of the game modes because it's basically just using logic and using deductive reasoning to basically eliminate where enemies can be, where they cannot be, and basically just using your team's information to your advantage. So let's get right into it. So we're gonna start here with the most basic example that I can show you to really get this idea down for you guys. So let's say we're talking about uh, search and destroy on invasion here. We have the map open over here. Let's say we're this blue team, we're on defense, and we know that the last guy on offense is somewhere around their back base. Let's say he had to you know, go around here, pick up the bomb or something, whatever. So this tactic in S&D is mostly used when your team already has some numbers, so you can afford a player to do this for your team. So let's say we're in a 3v1 scenario. We have one guy towards the B side, one guy towards mid here, and you're on this A side. You know for a fact that this last guy, number two, is 100% towards their base because let's say you were in a 4v1 and number eight died to him, right? So we know for 100% fact that he is in their base. So what you can do here is you can cut the map and cutting the map is basically making sure that you have the entire area of the map cut off so that you know for a fact that this person must cross your line of sight in order for him to get progress on the rest of the map. So let's say you're number six here towards the bathroom area. I'll just you know put this a little bit to the left so the Humvee is not in the way. But by holding this cross, you have the entire area cut off of where the enemy has to go in order to win the round. In order to win the round here, he has to pick the bomb and plant it at one of these sites, you know, assuming that everyone on your team stays alive. So what you can do here is make sure that you get this info for your team. And it's not that this number two player could possibly go towards the site, you know, with you watching it. It's that he cannot go towards the site without you seeing him go towards, you know, no man's and crossing either towards mid or going through front DVD or going through this P4 street, you know, in order for him to get there, he needs to pass your line of sight here. And the only way here that he gets out of this is actually swooping around, taking a route, killing you, and then going towards A site. So that's most of the time why you wouldn't see someone playing this position because it is a gamble like that because they could technically take this route and kill you. So the best way to play one of these spots where you're cutting the whole map is to play, you know, a corner that's, you know, super hard, super deep, deep for anyone to actually chow you with. So let's say we're talking about number seven here. He's technically cutting this entire side of the map by himself. And if he paired this up with, you know, number five, who's playing towards this B street area, all he needs to do is make sure that this mid cut area is solidified for the team. So he doesn't have to worry about it while he's playing this corner here. But anyone that has to come through mid, anyone that comes out of cafe here, or anyone that goes through the A street, is being met by the line of sight of number seven here. So this is a really important concept because a lot of times you see this in holds in hardpoint setups or in control setups, or even in man invented situations in S and D, you know, this information that you need to be able to see them in order for them to actually get progression on the map is so important because you can use that advantage for your team, relay that to the rest of your teammates and you can play off of that. So if you're watching this cross like this, they technically don't need to worry about this B street yet until they're met with some sort of action on your side where you're gonna be able to see them, uh, you know, cross that line of sight. So making sure that you have that full information and communicate to your teammates that you have that for them is super beneficial and they can start worrying about something else. Some problems that come to mind and this is what happens when, you know, ideal setups are not being met and, you know, communication is off for a team is let's say number six is playing over here towards front cafe rather than deep towards you know this bathroom area and can see the a street if he communicates to number seven that he has the entire cross number seven here might not be aware of anyone that might possibly you know sneak around through this a street behind number six here and they can be met with a gunfight that they're not expecting so really making sure that you're relaying what you technically have and any gaps in the setup you know technically the gap in the setup here is this a street because you're not holding that for your team you're holding the rest of the map here but there is an open part of this setup that number two could take here and technically get a free kill on number seven if he's not expecting it so those are the basics of cutting the map and now I'll go to some cdl pro examples of teams actually using these type of ideas in real games. Okay, we'll start here with the Boston versus Seattle search and destroy on terminal here. This is a round where Boston's going with a fast B hit over here. They get one kill, you know, some trades start going down and this allows Seattle to start taking some map pressure on this defensive side. As you can see here, Kyler is making a play towards library here. He knows from the information of his teammates that all four of those players were towards that B side. So what he can do here by getting this map pressure and by being active on this map, you know, he was in front plane over here at the beginning of this round. He takes this route to go up through the middle of the map, go towards book. And now what he's doing is making sure that he's holding the cross back towards the A side. So he has this entire cross for Seattle. That means Boston cannot rotate towards this A site without Kyler seeing that. 
them. So this information is so crucial because he's basically locking down an entire area of the map and getting that info for his team so he can trust the rest of his teams to start watching B in case you know these guys had gone back towards the B side rather than trying to rotate towards this A side like you see here. So what's gonna happen here is Kyler is holding this cross from this deep corner. It's a really hard over chow. So if anyone is suspecting Kyler to possibly be pushed up here, you know, they have to really commit to the gunfight like this. So he's holding this entire cross by just holding this one little line of sight. He knows for a 100% fact, they cannot be here. They cannot be here. They cannot even be towards this A side at all. The only way that they can sneak up on him is to go through the B side, hit through the holes and flank around this way. But honestly, you know, his teammates already have this because they're covering this B side. So by holding this one little angry here, he's getting all the information in the world for his team. And this is a really good play because he was able to get pushed up so heavily with the offense committing to that B side hit. So as you see Kyler here, you know, they're even checking. Snoopy tries to check for this corner. He gets the information that Snoopy crosses and now he's just going to back away. He knows that they've crossed towards this A side and could be committing towards the plane. So he's going to relay to his teammates. You know, they could possibly hit plane here and technically he could be met with another gunfight here as he watches dream side. So, you know, he's going to rotate towards this A side knowing that's a possibility that they can just instantly hit dreams to terminal here or hit out the double windows like he's looking for right here. But, you know, technically they could just cross back to B side. So he doesn't know for sure yet, but by getting that initial info, he stunts their push just a little bit because they know that he knew that they crossed. So it becomes a little mind game here where they're expecting uh, Kyler to, you know, tell his teammates to rotate towards this A site. So maybe they're going to just double back towards this B side. And that's what, you know, they're trying to decide here. They actually start committing here towards the A side. So as you see, Kyler jiggles, he sees them and he also has RCs who's holding this cut here. So making sure on this cut, and you'll see this a lot of times, but by holding this cut and seeing dreams, he can give that information to Kyler once they cross dreams. So what he He's doing here is cutting the map once again so it's another version of the cut where they cannot possibly get towards this a side without meeting him either going through you know front holes jumping out here or going through terminal like this so they have to cross his line of sight in order to get towards the a site they have number six still here anchoring towards that b side and now they can play the rest of this round uh knowing that info obviously you see snoopy cross here he's going to start rotating with the rest of his team uh to try and you know stunt this push because they know that at least one guy had cross already technically they can uh, once again double back but they're just going to commit to this here so they're going to have number six still anchored towards the b side just in case they wrap back but boston actually just hits out this plane there are some trades that go down and now priest is in a 1v2 uh seattle ends up winning the round even though priest gets another kill but that's just a good example of what i was talking about with defenses using this with a man advantage just playing that info so that they can relay that to the rest of their team and they can just play off of that. All right, this is another SD example, this time on Invasion. Boston, coincidentally, here is on the offensive side. Joe Sieves gets a really good first blood on the bomb carrier by channeling out of the pillars here. So LET is in a 4v3 situation. They knew it was a possible B side hit by Boston with their bomb carrier down. So they're just trying to get info once again where these players are playing. Cami gets Slasher super weak. And what they're gonna try and do now is just hold a setup together. So as you can see with this setup, you have number seven watching this B side, number eight watching mid, number six watching this back A door, and number five kind of helping them and also watching the A street like number six is too with that cross. So technically they're cutting everything on the map. In order to get to any one of these plant sites, they need to be met with some type of line of sight on the LAT side. So this is a really decent setup by LAT with numbers advantage. And this is gonna be super hard for Boston to break if they play it right. So as you can see here, Cami is gonna try and play his life towards the B side, still try and get any type of info without dying. And he starts to realize they could be pushing towards this B side because technically that's where their initial push was. No one else is seeing anything on the map. And he sees some tax being thrown from this side. So what he's gonna tell his team to do is adjust the setup. So what they can do here is have Afro watching this mid cut in order to get to the B side, in order to chow Cami, they need to pass Afro's line of sight. And because number six is now holding mid, and number five is holding the A street. Technically, no one on the Boston team can be anywhere on his flank so that he doesn't have to worry about dying from his back. So what he can do is just focus on this cut for Cami because if he can get you know one or two kills or even make people weak for Cami, they can team work that and get an easy win for this round. So as you see here, this is the importance of how people are playing these setups. They can rely on their teammates to hold their back for them and make sure that they don't die in this position that's so crucial to the rest of this round. You know, technically if number six, let's say he had pushed through into cafe here and he was just playing one kill freebie in the corner camping, you know, that's just not using any teamwork at all because technically number two here could have just pushed through mid and killed number eight for free. But since number six is watching this, he has that line of sight and gunfight possibility on anyone that might be coming 
through that BDOM area. So once again, we'll bring logic into this area. We know that no one can be on our backside. We know that they have to go and push Cami onto this B side by crossing this lane, crossing this little line of sight. So all he has to do is play an off angle corner here. Look at the angle that he's playing. He's playing super tight towards the right side of this wall. This is important because in order to actually kill Afro, they need to overextend to the maximum possibility to get over here and actually challenge him. You know, if he was playing on this side, they could just challenge him from this close corner and then possibly kill Cami right away afterwards but by shifting to the right side here making them have to overextend to the most of their ability to kill him let is opening this setup for as much as possible for cami to meet this cross and help team work that so as you see here he's holding this right side angle he's going to continue to hold this because they need to meet him towards this side of the map in order to actually get towards the b side in order to actually kill cami he gets the kill on slasher gets priest a week and actually gets another kill on snoopy so cami actually dies to priest which is really unfortunate because he was super Super weak already 11 hp but you know the damage is already done it was already a 4v3 situation now it's a 3v1 it's just a freebie win for let now they know last guy's alive he could technically take a route here and you know we're having another situation where we're cutting the map number six like i was talking about before he's playing this deep corner he can see the entire a street he can see an entire mid push and he can see the entire push out of the back door of cafes and he's team working with number eight who's watching over him so in technically in case number two swooped around and you know check this corner to his right killed this guy number six he's still being met with the trade by number eight so they're team working this really well and let is able to win this round here so now we'll move on to some respawn examples this is actually control here this is miami versus minnesota miami wins the break here journey gets a nice two piece to cap off this initial b push by minnesota they weren't able to cap it so what happens now minnesota is spawning you know deep towards ice cream over here miami on the other hand is spawning towards gas they can try and refill towards mid and refill towards this p4 street making sure that if minnesota tries to hit B again they're going to be met with some teamwork by the Miami team so what you see here is Miami is actually starting to spread the map technically Minnesota could have went straight to A so that's what Miami is holding here look at number two what is he doing he's holding the cross to A he's cutting the map lucky knows for 100% fact that Minnesota needs to cross his line of sight in order to get towards this A point once he sees that no one's crossing initially he can relay that to the rest of his team knows that all of them are trying to go towards either mid or towards the B side and number three here he's even cutting the map even more by holding mid like this so he knows that no one's going courtyard number two knows that no one has crossed towards this a street already so they can play for a possibility of another b hit for minnesota and as you see here this is exactly what miami does so minnesota is slowly working up towards this b point and as you can see look at the positioning of number three it's basically the same position that we were talking about with afro in the search and what he's doing in this position is making sure that he has this entire mid cut cross for his team he's cutting that part of the map he knows that they cannot be towards this courtyard unless they took a really long and slow route towards the middle of the map and they know from the comms that no one is towards this a side from lucky so he can just hold this cross for the rest of his team number four doesn't have to chow number one doesn't have to chow they just need to play off of the info that number three gets as he's holding this cross so what do you know minnesota is trying to get a first blood here miami actually gets the first kill here and what do you know they haven't even crossed yet they still have to over chow this mid cut making sure that no one is watching this mid cut but unfortunately they have to go to this point in order to continue this round so they have to sacrifice possibly getting funneled by number three here they already know that people are probably playing towards this b side you know, metals on this defensive side has already gotten a kill so they have to expect there's possibility of more people on the miami side here and on the minnesota side by not taking a route here to try and kill this guy mid cut this is making their life miserable trying to get to this b point because they need to make sure that they need to kill him before they kill these other guys because they're not going to chow until they get that information from you know vickle watching this cross this is a really good play by vickle but this is why for minnesota it's a gamble of sending everyone towards this b side once again and not taking a route for this guy because they they can just stuff this and it's just an easy stuff for miami here you see vickle gets a kill on the cross and then once they get that second kill on lens journey is just going to start pushing up trying to get some space and get getting any sort of kill on anyone that might have just been playing super slow towards the tank and he's awarded for that so they don't technically need vickle using that cut spot anymore they can start getting aggressive it's just a possibility to start getting aggressive you know once you get those first two kills you can start getting more aggressive playing those trades they're rewarded for that journey is able to get the two piece and now this is basically a round win for miami and as you can see here they know they're still spawning back ice cream over here number two is still holding this entire cut for the a side they cannot get towards the a side without meeting number two first and as you see they decide to keep bullying towards this b side and they get some kills they start getting back on the point but you know this is just the idea of continuously cutting the map making sure that you're getting that info for your team and you can relay to your team how to play the rest of the situation with you holding that other part of the map for them and the last situation i'll talk about here this is one i kind of broke down already in the vod session of this map but as you see here this is a situation where 
New York is holding this P4 on skid row. Sib gets a three piece, and this is a situation where Vegas needs to contest on time. They're already at 221, 30 seconds left on the clock. That means that's possible for them to win on this hill. And that means for New York, you just have to cut the entrances of the hill off so that Vegas can't touch the point. And as you'll see here, this is exactly what Skies does. He spawns top mid, jumps out of this top fire window and makes sure that he's cutting the entire backside of the hill for his team. The rest of his team is watching this front door. As you see Kismet towards dark over here, Sib watching this front window. And Skies, by holding this corner here, by holding you know bottom mid and this cross over here, he is making sure for his team that no one on the enemy team can get towards this back side of the point and even towards this dark side. So all they really need to do is watch the tunnel side. He's cutting off everything else for his team. This is one of those on the fly things that you can start, you know, working on trying to get better at. You know, you're just going to have to really think about the game in a different way when you're starting to look at the maps like this. Making sure you're just holding the area of the map that you can hold for your team so they don't have to worry about it. And by holding all of this area of the map, all he needs to do is relay into the comms to the rest of his team. Just watch your front tunnel. I literally have everything else for you. And that reassures the rest of your team because they know that you're in a controlled situation and that they can trust you on where the enemies could be coming from. So technically, you know, Skies can get one kill and get traded out over here. And at that point, he's not holding it anymore. But for that time that he was alive, he was holding it. And even though he dies, you know, it might be seen as a bad thing as dying, but it's actually not so bad that he died after getting one kill because now the rest of your team can play for that. They have another aspect of information they can work on. They know that one player is dead and one player had just traded you in a specific position. So by being active on the map, you have given them some info that they can work with on actually, you know, holding the rest of this setup. And once you spawn up, you can adjust to that with what your teammates are calling out. So really making sure that you're just playing off of this info and playing these areas of the map that you can get info for your team and actually communicating to your teammates what they need to be watching because you have something else covered for them. So thank you guys for watching this video on cutting the map. You know, there's just so many situations and so many areas of where you can do these types of plays that you're just gonna have to be doing this on the fly, making sure that you just actually have things held down on the map for your team. But honestly, it's just really making sure that you're covering all the info possible for your team and making sure that enemies can't be in a specific area of the map. So thank you guys for making it to the end of the video. Hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you guys in the next one.